Okay. So, game number two. Still at the 10 minute time control. Hutch again with white, so playing d4. And let's see if we get another d4, d5 game. Knight f6 is another common move here. Actually, more common than d5 even. So, we do get another d4, d5 game. Hutch going with the queen's gambit. c4, queen's gambit accepted. Yeah, the capture. So, now Hutch has a variety of ways he can play against this. You do want to recover the pawn. He chooses one of the most principled moves. So, establishing two pawns in the center, a pawn duo, e4, d4. And he's looking to recover the pawn with bishop takes c4. Okay, so b5, black looking to hold on to it. So here, Hutch has a chance to apply something that I just talked about, which is play his pawn up to a4 and try to undermine black's pawns on the queen side. So pawn a4 would effectively attack that mini chain. And he should definitely play that move. If black were to respond with c6, then he could take and uh, play b3. So that's quite the coincidence that he has a chance to put something into practice that we just discussed. There he goes. Okay, a4. He thought about it a little bit. He took his time. I like that. Spent 30 seconds on that move. Yep, c6. Does the capture. He seems confident. All right, let's see if we get b3. B3 is the way to go here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he played knight f3, a developing move, but yeah, he's going to want to attack c4 and b5. Those pawns are uh, extended pretty far up the board right now, and black doesn't have any development at all. So white should be looking to play b3. So if black takes here, he can... There he goes. Okay, so he delayed by a move, played knight f3 first, but I think it's still good. Maybe black could have played bishop b7 or a different move. Try to make a developing move, which would have put Black in a better position to counter this b3 idea. <laughs> the chat is going crazy, pointing out that Hutch just learned about this. Okay, bishop b4 check. So Hutch can just play bishop d2 here. Block the check, and if Black wants to take, he can contribute to his development, take with the knight. So note how difficult it is for Black to maintain these pawns. That's... The big reason Hutch is playing like this and being so aggressive on the queen side. Black has very little development, no development now, once again, backing up those pawns. So if this pawn budges, he's going to get the opportunity to play bishop takes b5 check. So I would definitely take with the knight here. He's maybe calculating the ramifications of c3. So if knight takes, pawn c3, attacking the knight. But very importantly, bishop takes b5 is coming with check. And then he'll get a chance to move this knight. You know, let's say knight d7, maybe knight c4. And very likely this pawn will just be too far from home and end up being lost in the future. So hopefully something like that happens. Okay, he took with the queen on d2. Queen takes d2. Black responded with queen c7. So a bit of a misstep there, taking with the queen, but I bet he was worried about c3. That would be my perception of what was going through his head there. Takes on c4. So Hutch is still down a pawn after Black recaptures, but he has good chances to win it back, because c4 is going to be tough to defend. Now here he probably wants to look at moves like queen c3, queen b4 perhaps, hitting the pawn. Maybe a developing move. He can maybe think about bringing his knight out to one of these squares. Knight a3 would bring the knight into the game and also attack c4 twice. Although black could play c3. Does play knight a3. Okay. White can flirt with the idea of knight b5 in the future too. So in addition to attacking c4, he might have that on deck as well. Bishop a6 defends the pawn. And now I think it would be sensible for Hutch just to play rook c1. There he goes. Attack the pawn again. Okay, so piling up on c4. And there isn't a way for black to defend that pawn. He's got the two defenders right now, but due to black's poor development, like for instance, this knight on b8 is not out. If it were on d7, black could swing the rook over to c8 and add a defender. Although actually, even in this case, that wouldn't work. But you can see that overall black is somewhat suffering here due to their backward development. However, black could try to fix that situation by playing a move like knight f6, I think would be good here. So attacking the pawn on e4. Black plays knight e7, so 
similar, although I think knight f6 would have been better because it would have come with a gain of time against e4. And just like last game, Hutch gets to play bishop takes c4 in one go. That's nice when you can recapture a pawn like that, contribute to your development. Takes with the knight. So this situation, white's rook lined up with black's queen. That's a positive one for Hutch because constantly black will have to be on guard about white moving the knight away, doing some sort of discovery against the queen. There's no devastating discovery at the moment. In other words, if white got a move, there's nothing that Hutch could do that would be decisive as far as doing a discovered attack on the queen. But just that thought that black has to constantly be on guard for that will prove annoying, I think. Hutch is a bit better here. He's still got that development edge. He's got two center pawns to black's one. That's usually an advantage. Black does have what we'd call a pass pawn over here on a7, so the far left side of the board. However, this pass pawn, and a pass pawn is a pawn that doesn't have any enemy pawns blocking it. Uh, sometimes pass pawns are strong, especially in endgames. They can be significant force, but here, this is a long way from being able to promote on a1, and it's likely that if the pawn were advanced, it would just be lost or, or worse. So white is, shouldn't be at all worried about this pawn yet. Okay, so knight to e5, attacking the queen here. I bet next touch will probably try to get this rook, the rook on f1, into the game. So his opponent has just played queen to b7. Rook fe1 looks sensible, just defending the pawn on e4. Yep, and that's what he plays. Black has to be careful tactically, too, I think, because... Even though the queen is not lined up with white's rook on c1 anymore, there's still tactical issues. Okay, so here, a5. This pawn is insufficiently defended. Hutch can play knight takes a5 and grab it because black does have one defender, but look at white's queen backing it up. Queen takes a5 will be played after that. So he should absolutely take that pawn. Probably wants to spend a little time verifying if he can or not. That's always good to do. You never want to assume your opponent has just blundered. You always want to double-check things for yourself. But that pawn is there for the taking. And he does take it. Great. And let's see if black notices that white's queen is defending the knight. I think black does, because otherwise black probably would have taken the knight by now. So Nezhap has to move the queen. I think that's mandatory here. Black does. And now Hutch should just bring this knight right back to c4. It's nicely defended there. Okay, so there might be some more tactics and such coming up, but long term, Hutch would like to make use of his extra pawn in the center. Maybe down the road he'll be looking for a chance to play d5. If we cancel out all the other pieces, then the extra material that white has on board as is that d pawn so he'll probably be looking to push it somewhere down the line the position is still pretty volatile though knight c6 offering a trade of knights based on what i was talking about before a trade should benefit hutch because he's up a pawn so i don't think he would mind swapping the only thing is that does contribute to black's development black gets to play knight b knight on b8 takes on c6 so i think another move that comes to mind here is knight d6 coming in and attacking the queen on b5. Just because the queen does have to stay monitoring that knight on c6, notice that by playing the knight into d6, that opens up white's rook on c1 as well. Okay, rook e3. Hmm. That's interesting. So I wonder if Hutch is thinking about trying to swing the rook over to g3 and try to attack the pawn on g7. That could be what he's thinking. That's an aggressive plan. If he does go for that plan, it makes some sense because black doesn't have a lot of defenders around his king. Black plays f6, so he's trying to boot the knight. Looks like you can bring this knight to a number of different squares. You could go to c4. d3 is interesting. By playing the move f6, notice that the pawn on e6 is undefended. 
So white could think of, ooh, okay. Yeah, I don't like this square for the knight because notice the knight doesn't have any retreat squares available. So if, instead of knight c6 there that black just played, if black had played the move h5, this knight would have been stuck. Nowhere to go. Maybe white can play knight h6 check and sacrifice it or something, but I doubt it. So yeah, I, I didn't like that move by Hutch because black had a chance to trap that knight. But the game goes on here. Okay, so he does play rook g3. Looks like he was looking to lift that rook over to the g file and try to attack black's king. Black sidesteps. Hutch has to be a little careful here that he doesn't wreck his coordination because he's got some pieces on the queen side, some on the king side. I hope he doesn't feel like he has to checkmate black here because he's still playing a good game up a pawn. My instinct would just be to try to try to nurse this pawn advantage and slowly, you know, swap down, eventually make a pass D pawn, like I was alluding to earlier. I don't know if an attack against Black's king is going to quite work out. Queen D1. Hmm. So what's the purpose of that move? I don't know. Maybe Hutch is trying to move this knight and then swing the queen over to the king side, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, and now Nizop is on the counterattack, so attacking d4. Rook d3, okay, I like that. One of the tougher things to do in chess is to admit that the plan you adopted or even the move that you just made was a mistake. So I like the fact that Hutch doesn't feel like he had to checkmate black there, and he is swinging the rook back over. Like, that's an admission that, okay, you got me. My attack is probably not going to crash through anytime soon, so he's just focusing on where he's ahead. Protect protect the asset. Protect the pawn here on d4. Yeah, now he advances it to d5. Good. It was under attack three times, so I think that's smart. Hmm. The chat is not liking Hutch's, Hutch's chances. Someone said he foresees him losing. <laughs> I think Hutch is doing well. Both sides have to watch their clock a little bit, but still a decent amount of time remaining. Okay, now, once his opponent takes back, let's see if Hutch notices the threat. The threat on f2. Black has lined up the queen and the rook. Hope he addresses that. He probably needs his queen off the back rank. Good. So, queen to d2, establishing connection with the pawn here. I like it. Black pushing the e-pawn. Now, this e-pawn looks like it could be weak, so I wonder if Hutch will just try to play rook e3 and pile up against it. Maybe rook d4 as well. Yeah, rook d4 makes sense too, as he just played. If he could pick off the e4 pawn as well, then he's up two pawns. Black is lacking uh, real clear ways to make tactical threats. So that material advantage should be significant. So I think here, yeah, I would play something like that. Queen e3, maybe rook e1 coming, trying to attack this pawn. Also, in situations like this where you're a bit further into the game and the pace of play has maybe slowed down a little bit, it makes sense to play what we call a luft move. So a move like g3 or h3, creating just a cubby hole for the king to come up so you don't have to worry about back rank checkmate threats later on. And let's see if Hutch plays rook e1. I like the, the look of rook e1 right here. Just pile up against the e4 pawn. Yep, there it goes. No, Hutch cannot hear me right now. <laughs> An h6. Okay, so now Hutch could take on e4, but after these mass trades, that would just amount to um, an endgame where Hutch will be up one pawn, but notice that black will be able to take on d5 at the end, so I'm just going to demonstrate this on my board. So after all these trades occur... Black will win d5, and Black has just played that cubbyhole move that I alluded to. So, and we do have these trades. They are occurring on the board. So we're going to get a technical endgame. It's going to be three pawns versus two pawns with rooks on board. This is a theoretical draw, meaning, assuming best play for both sides, white should not be able to win this. But we're a long ways from that, and also time is becoming a factor too. 
Hutch is going to want to start advancing his G&H pawns, start creating some space, gaining some space. But this is just a tough end game to win because so many rook end games end up being draws, even if one side is up a pawn or sometimes even two pawns. There's just a, a plethora of positions that the defending side can always steer for in order to hold the draw. Just wants to make sure that he doesn't give Black a chance to go down to, say, you know, the second rank and start attacking these pawns. So he pulls the king back. I think it would make sense to play h4 coming up soon. So try to push this pawn. h3. Very likely there's going to be a trade of a pawn or two eventually. Now, if you were Black here, the thing you wouldn't want to do is trade rooks. You don't want to swap rooks and get into a three pawns versus two pawns with kings on board situation, a pawn end game. Pawn end games, there's always, or almost always, no going back from that. Like once you get into a pawn end game, the, the result can usually be determined. And if you're black here, you want to keep the rooks on board. Like that, that gives you your best chance to draw in the long run. Okay, so Hutch plays h4 check. I like that. So try to push the king away a bit more. Yeah, what to do here? It'd be nice to try to create some inconvenience with the rook. Like maybe rook down to e8 and then try to give a check on f8. Try to push the king away a bit more. He's just being patient. Rook to, to the second rank, rook e2. Protecting against rook a2. I just fear that the time is going to catch up with him here pretty soon. Kicked Black's king back. That's good. Probably want to swing the rook over here. Plays f4. Okay. That allows the king into g4, so that's dangerous to play. Nezhap has shown that he's not shy about using his king, so yeah, that f4 move, unfortunately, does give Black some counterplay now. Now Hutch has to be a little careful, because... Black might have in mind rook a3 and go try to pick up this guy over here. Position should still be a draw, but yeah, he's got to exercise a little caution now. Like rook a3 would be a good move for black. And there he goes. Hutch can set a trap right now. He can play rook b5 with the idea that if black takes, he does have rook g5 check, skewering the king and the rook. Unfortunately, after rook b5, black can insert the move rook f3 check which is good. So, yeah, all of a sudden, Hutch, in a pawn-up position, is going to have to fight very hard for a draw. Goes rook b6. Probably a good move. Yeah, attacking the g6 pawn, playing for activity. In a rook endgame, especially a single rook endgame, rook activity is uh, one of the things that you always want to keep in mind. You almost always want to play with an active rook. You don't want to keep it tied down to the defensive pawns. So I like that he's using this aggressively. Yeah, go take that pawn on g6. Black will take on h4. And Hutch, now, because of that operation, he still has chances. Because notice that Black's king is boxed in on the side of the board. Black can never go to the g file with his king. So I wonder if Hutch will be able to use this f pawn with his dwindling time. And maybe even drum up some winning chances here. It's going to be tough. Yeah, black dutifully pushing the h-pawn, but notice that black's king is always blocking that h-pawn. I think here black could play rook g2 and offer a rook trade so that if white takes, he gets to unblock that pawn. No, he's going to go for the check. Gotta hurry. Might be time for some pre-move soon from Hutch. <laughs> Needs to get his king out of the way and start pushing this pawn. Oh boy. He's offering a rook trade. I bet black does not take him up on that. That would be a draw if black does. Even though white will queen first. Yeah, it's just rough with the time. Okay, pawn's going. I think his best chance to try to get a draw here is, you know, obviously push the f-pawn, try to get black to sacrifice it for the rook, and then attempt to eliminate black's last pawn. Five seconds. 
push the f-pawn 1.9 seconds i just don't think he's quite gonna get there yeah and he loses on time okay well unfortunate end yeah that end game uh took a turn for the worst when uh hutch allowed black to play king g4 that was the move that gave black quite a bit of counterplay so right here when hutch played f4 on move 46 but very intriguing game I think he handled the first half of that game pretty well. He got that extra pawn. He remembered some of the stuff we were talking about, so we will certainly analyze that a bit. That is the disadvantage of playing without increment, right? 